At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies God, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, holy in his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary and Elizabeth prepared themselves for the miracle of God's gift of love. Elizabeth, Elizabeth explains her joy and Mary sings with exuberance. Both trusted God's hope-filled promise. Let us pray. O God of hosts, shine your love on us. Give us a song to sing that declares your love for all creation. And use us to do your work in the world. Amen. With all of the challenges and the anger and the upset, the fears and the frustration, the disappointment, the heartaches, folks, of all people, we have a message to share, and that's a message of joy, joy to the world. Please stand and join us. So there are prayer cards on the back of the pew in front of you, and if you have uh, a prayer request, I'm going to ask you, if you would, to drop that in the, in the collection plate, because those, those requests are prayed over uh, by a group that keeps those requests very confidential, and I also will see them. And, and pray over them. So please avail yourself. If you have a, uh, a request now, as we move into a time of prayer, that you would like to, uh, to submit. We do have a couple of uh, urgent um, prayer 
needs out there within uh, the congregation and friends of the congregation. So I know you're lifting them up. We want to continue to lift them up. And so let's do that in a time of silent prayer because all of us have come in with something either of thanks in our own heart or of concern. section in the book of Luke today, rather than the one printed in your bulletin, I changed it. Um, 
actually yesterday, and I felt like we'll go with this one. It is from Luke 1, not Luke 2, in the, as you have in the bulletin. So if you have your Bibles and want to just listen, this is what um, we know historically has been called the Annunciation or the Announcement to Mary from uh, the angel Gabriel. This is the word as it came to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a village betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was troubled greatly at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and called and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. He'll reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how, how is this possible? How can this be? I, I don't know a man. I have no husband. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and the power of the Most High will come unto you and therefore the child to be born of you will be called holy. This child will be called holy. Holy. Y'all say holy. The Son of God. Behold, your kinsman Elizabeth in her old age also conceived the Son, and that was in the sixth month with her who was also considered barren. For with God, nothing, nothing is impossible. Mary said, Behold, I'm the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Yeah. Anybody in here, you may not want to hold your hand up on this, or may, you may want to. Anybody ever, in, I never have. I can't answer this in the from Anybody seen an angel? Well, we do have one. Two. Two people, okay. I'd like to talk to you both. <laughs> I'd love to hear that. I, I've never seen an angel. I married one. <laughs> let it be, let the record state my wife is present today and <laughs> put a little plug in there. Never have seen one. I had had a um, member of a church one time. I was I don't know whether it was Christmas service or what it was, but I mentioned angels during the service. And afterwards, he came up, <laughs> waited till everybody got. Him. He said, "John, I want to tell you what happened to me. It's been a long time ago." He said, "I don't tell that to many people." And when they when they start by saying, "I don't tell that to many people," I'm all ears. I know this is going to be good. At any rate, he was out walking. He had a walk that he took periodically, and it was through the woods. And the interesting thing enough, that there was no crisis in his life. There was no um, emergency, nothing that he was troubled by. He just heard voices behind him. And he looked behind him, but wasn't anybody back there? Looked around, right and left, nobody's there. So kept going, but the voices started getting um, nearer and nearer, and then he thought, that's above me, and he, and he looked up, and there were two humans with wings, this is the story, that were moving over the treetops and talking with one another, they didn't speak to him, which is interesting. They just went on. That was it. He said, you know, to this day, I'm not sure why. So after that day, my faith 
jumped from here to here. I said, I bet. I've never, I've never seen an angel. I saw, I, I went to a conference one time where there was a dance troupe there. And these are, this is, these are some, some Methodist folks, and what they do, they'll set music to something that has a, a beat to it. And they had, they had a lot of young uh, teenage girls and young adults in the church, and they had long flowing robes on, white robes. And they would do these, um, uh, they would dance to that appropriately, right down here. Very, very beautiful. I've never seen that. And I noticed there was a crowd that kept gathering around their exhibit table in this conference. There were a bunch of tables, but boy, that, 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 group, that, that group always had a crowd around it. They'd come and go, come and go. There's always people. So I walked over there and I said, what's the deal? They said, Have you, you hadn't seen that picture? I said, no. They said, go on over there. So I went on over there. And they had taken a picture of a dance troupe, their dance troupe, at some other church somewhere. And that night, there was a pho that photograph showed something that they did not see themselves. And here's what it showed. They knew that on this side of the altar, there were X number of young women. There were always were. On this side of the altar, there were X number of young women. But that wasn't the unusual part. There was an extra figure in the photograph. Now, none of them saw this that night. Only the photograph showed them. But there, right in the middle of the service, was a young woman. But she was dressed a little differently. Long white robe, but she had a, she had a band, a brow band, went, went right across here. And she had these... She had a strap around her uh, upper body that X'd out right here and then over a long white rug. And so I just, I had to ask, I said, well, who, who was this? Who slipped in the service? She, they said, we have no idea. And we did not see that. But the photographer and the photograph showed it. Now, if that's not an angel, please, what is? I'll give you one more Christmas story. And now where, where I'm headed with this is this, is that our faith is primarily grounded so much in the capacity to believe and also to act in life as if this world was not all there is. That there is something else beyond what we can see and feel and taste and touch that eye hath not seen and ear hath not heard. That there, there's something more than just what's in front of us. And that life consists of more than what am I going to eat, what am I going to drink, and what am I going to buy next. There is a, there's a supernatural element to the Christian life. Luke understood this. Luke recorded both to Elizabeth and to Mary, the announcement. And we looked at the, the, the visitation. There was a, somebody that God had sent from heaven to announce to Mary, Mary, you need to prepare yourself. You need to get ready for this. And almost to ask her blessing on it, her approval on it. Because the Bible says that she said, okay, be it unto me. Isn't that interesting that all of creation was waiting? For a young woman. To say yes. And she did. Part of the angel's message to her was that, look, Mary, nothing's impossible. This can happen. This is going to happen to you. She said, okay. And the child will be called holy because it has no human father. It has a father who is in heaven. So Jesus to us, to you, 
to me, is the incarnate Word of God, the, the, the Word of the Father, as Charles Wesley wrote, now in flesh appearing. The, the, the come from glory, returns to glory, and will come back one day, and he has this, this power. It, 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 it's, it's written into the, the first Christmas message that Jesus is not just some historical figure that lived and walked and, and, and kind of had some nice messages 2,000 years ago. He's not Aristotle. He's not, you know any of the Roman authors. He's not Shakespeare. He's not a good guy. No. Even the angels bow down. So there's this supernatural, otherworldly thing that's part of our faith. We, we believe that nothing is impossible with God. I mean, church, we believe that, right? Y'all say this with me. Nothing. No, that's impossible. Let that get down, way down in you, and life changes just like, just like that. I want to add the second half of this, is that in this supernatural event that's angels herald, and later on we see lights and voices and all this, that it, it's a baby. This, this, this glory appears in the form of a baby. This little infant. So meek and mild, this is so I mean, you've got this both end kind of thing that you have to hold together of Jesus being the all-encompassing, complete Son but yet condescending to come to us in the form of a child, an infant, with all the frailties and with all the struggles and with all the tempted as we are, as Hebrews says, and yet without sin. It's a, isn't that it's a marvelous thing to contemplate? We have, a, we have a Savior, here we go, that has the power and the love. I'm going to leave you with this. William Barclay tells a story of a couple that he knew back, way back along the way, turn of century England, who had a child who had a limp, and the child was going to limp, and great, great kid, but had a limp. And the parents were taking him through downtown London to buy him uh, a couple of Christmas presents that he'd get, you know, ahead of time. And they came by a pet store. And they looked in the window, and a lot of the puppies ran up. You know how puppies do. They're going to run up was one that was slower coming up from the other because he couldn't. He had a limp. And they asked the boy, which one did he want? He said, this is what he said. He said, I want the puppy that's just like me. We have a Savior That's just like us. And we have a Savior who can do the impossible. The power and the love. Jesus can and Jesus will. And that's the gospel. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
and suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Angels from the realms of glory, please celebrate with us. The hymn is number 220, the first and last stanzas.